YouTube so um I guess I'm just doing another video on my pregnancy with the app was like to be 16 and pregnant um, let me just start off by saying that my dad is like super strict I mean I know I had a lot of freedom but he was also strict as far as we never talked about sex we never talked about boyfriends we never talked about you any anything like that we never ever talked about that like I never had that talk um, my mom never had that talk with me either and their views are a woman doesn't move out of their home or their parents house until they get married so even if you're 30 years old and you're still not married they think you know the Mexican tradition is that you still live at home so um, when Blake and I got together in 2006 I was 15 yeah, I was 15, I was about to turn 16, and my parents didn't know about him, and so we started sneaking out, and at the time, um, I remember one day, he said his his stepmom wanted to come to my parents, I guess, and, or his stepmom, his ex-stepmom asked his dad to come to my house, and, you know, let my dad know that Blake and I were sneaking out to see each other, and I mean, I guess she was trying to do it kind of I want to say to protect us like I'm trying to see what she was trying to do and I guess what she was trying to do is make sure that I didn't get pregnant I don't know because like said that she would say you're gonna end up like every other 15 year old who gets pregnant and so um I remember one time my dad or hit Blake called or I think we were on on MySpace back then it was MySpace and he said his dad was on our on his way to my house to talk to my dad and I think I was at my aunt's house that day, which is like 15 minutes away because she does like janitorial. And I was helping her um, do her janitorial work. And Blake said they were on their way to my house to talk to my dad. And I think we were having like a barbecue that day. And I guess my dad went and Blake's dad talked to, to my dad. But my dad, I don't know, I, my dad didn't believe it or something like that. So anyway, so that was that. So then whatever, we... You know, Blake and I were still together. My dad didn't, he didn't really say anything. I don't think he believed Blake's dad. But anyways, so um, I got pregnant February of 2007. And I remember the day I found out, um, I remember I took a test and Blake was at the house. It was right before I started school that morning. And, you know, I took the test. It's a positive test. I didn't really take it in though. I didn't, it wasn't, I don't know. For some reason I thought, nine months was a long time from now uh, I don't know I don't know what I was thinking I guess I just thought I'd have a miscarriage or something and so um you know I kind of was excited but I didn't take it in all the way like I didn't realize what was really happening and so um you know I told all my friends but I didn't tell my mom so finally it was like May I told my mom I haven't gotten my period and she was like what do you mean and I was like, oh, I don't know. I haven't gotten my period. She's like, are you pregnant? I was like, I don't know. And I walked away. It was just, I was so scared to go to them. I didn't, you know, we never talked about sex. So I didn't, I didn't know how to say, hey, I'm pregnant. They didn't even know I was having sex. So it's like, how do I, how do I tell them, you know? So I was, my mom still had me going to a pediatrician. So she made an appointment on the day of my birthday, July 5th. And she made an appointment and I remember my doctor asked me, you know, my mom couldn't be in there. So she had some blood work done on me and um, and that was it. And so like, I think it was a couple of days later, the doctor called her house and she said, yeah, you are pregnant. She's like, the law protects you. I can't tell your mom anything. She's like, so you have to tell your mom. So then my mom called our house, you know, I don't think it was that same day and she was like, has your doctor called you? I was like, no, she hasn't called me. She was like, okay, I'll call her doctor, your doctor. So she called my doctor and the doctor said, I can't tell you what, you know, what the blood results were. The law protects her. So my mom was like, obviously that means you are pregnant. And for some reason, I still couldn't say yes. I was so scared. I still couldn't say yes. So um, my parents had like a, a little birthday dinner for me and everyone came over and I wanted a new outfit. So they bought me like, we went to the store and I bought like a skirt and a shirt and I was kind of like, you could kind of tell. I was, I'm assuming I was like 20 something weeks by then and, oh, let me go back. I didn't go to my first appointment, prenatal appointment until I was like 20 weeks exactly. So I was considered a high risk. Um, so I went to my appointment and the, my first appointment, they were told me it was a girl. And so um, I, I had to take the bus, I was late. You know, nobody took me. I had to do everything by myself. I had 
to dig through my mom's purse to get my insurance card out. It was just, I was a big mess, but somehow I was able to get to the doctors. And so, um, this was still after my, my appointment at my pediatrician's office. And then so, and this was after my birthday dinner. So I had my birthday dinner and everyone, all my family was looking at me like, you know, weird because you can kind of, you could kind of see my stomach. And I have a cousin who, who was also, she was 17 when she got pregnant, I believe. So I wasn't the first in the family who was like uh, pregnant while in high school still. So my cousin knew about it and, you know, she would just ask if I needed anything or how I was feeling, but nobody else of our, from our family knew. And so, um, I remember that night when everyone left, my mom said, we need to talk. Are you pregnant? And I said, no, I don't know. I don't know. I just kept saying, I don't know. I couldn't say yes still. She said, well, look at you. You know, you're gaining weight. I was like, so who cares? And she was like, you've always cared about your weight. You know, you've always cared about what you look like and I was like yeah so what that doesn't matter I don't care anymore and so I remember she left my room crying that night and so um then a little bit after that is when I had my first prenatal appointment and then it was like August of that same year and we had moved to a different city and I remember um I was helping move stuff my dad still doesn't know it's already August of 2007 and Apple was born November so I was already like six months and so um my son my dad still didn't know and i remember we were moving furniture my mom would just kind of keep it on the down low and she would be like don't move things you know she kind of already had accepted it that i was pregnant i just never said yes i'm pregnant mm -hmm. and so she um one day my dad and my brother got into a physical fight and I could just, I was in my room, I was talking to Blake on the phone, and Blake's dad already knew. Blake's dad was like, she needs to tell her dad as soon as possible, you know, we need to figure out what she's going to do. Um, if she doesn't tell her dad, I'm going to go over there and tell her dad. And I would tell Blake, no, 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 I'll tell my dad tomorrow or something. Just kind of pushing it off. And so, um, my mom, my, my brother and my dad got into a physical fight, and then so um, I can remember hearing my parents fighting in the kitchen, and then... I guess my mom just couldn't hold it in anymore and she told my dad and I would just I guess you couldn't tell because I would hide it with big clothes and I guess Mary, she um that same day she she said you know I guess she said Jessica's pregnant I don't know but I just remember him saying no no she's not don't tell me that usually is a really you know he's up early in the morning no you don't baby nothing in your eye and so um, he usually is up early, you know, it was, a, it was a Saturday. He usually, you know, either wants to go out, go to have breakfast or something. He did not get up that whole day. So that's just how you could tell my dad was like in a depressed mood. So um, after, since, since he, after he found out, I was always locked up in my room. I never, ever came out. My parent, my dad would leave to work and then I would leave to school. I was going to high school that was like... That was for um, teen parents or pregnant parents and a little bus would come pick me up at like 9 in the morning and then it dropped me off right in front of my house at 2 in the afternoon so my dad would leave to work at 6 in the morning obviously I was sleeping and then I would come home at 2 he'd come home at like 4 or 5 and I was already in my room just watching TV um, I wasn't doing anything you know just sitting in my room can you give him his passing please yes thank you and so I was just always in my room and my mom would uh, make dinner and she'd just knock on my door and leave it outside and tiny i would just sit in there and just talk to blake on the phone or whatever and I, I like my dad didn't talk to me from like the it was at the middle of august until right before i had her like he did not talk to me at all and i would not talk to him thank you okay so he would make healthy foods like um like vegetable soup or something and he would i could hear him tell my mom you know serve her a plate and go take it to her room so she can eat so he did care he wanted me to and she was born november 25th and at 4 30 in the morning i remember it was saturday morning the 24th and i woke up and i felt like a little like gush of water kind of and i went to the bathroom and you know, I myself and I felt like tinkling. And so I was like, okay. Um, and then I called Blake's house and his sister answered and I said, and she was like, I had a dream that you had apple. I was like, well, I actually think my water's broken. And so um, I guess, you know, um, 
Blake said he needed to go to the hospital and I was like no maybe it's not my water broke and so I took a shower I ate a little bit and then I called my doctor and she was like you know what yeah it would be your water's broken go ahead and go into the hospital and this was about 9 a.m in the morning so I called my mom at work like at 3 and she was like do you want to go right now I was like no I'll just wait till you get home she got home around 4 and I was like no I'm not ready yet I packed my bag it was around 6 o'clock in the afternoon and I was like okay we can go now so we went this is still Saturday I got to the hospital and they said oh yeah you're definitely staying here so you know they they gave me the medication for my my contractions to start and um I, I think, believe they gave it to me like around 10 and they said I kind of had like a small fever um I don't remember if they gave me anything for it. I don't think they did. And, uh, yeah, so, she, uh, finally, his aunt, Blake's aunt was there. And Blake was there. And his sister was there, but she was outside. And my mom was there, but she was, she would go to the hospital and then go home. When at 4.30 in the morning, she was 6, 12, 18 inches. And, yeah, 4.30 in the morning. And I remember I looked at her. And then Blake looked at her and he started crying. I didn't even, I think I did hold her and then they took her away. And she had to be in the little, in the NICU room, I guess they call her, because she thought she, they thought she had an infection, but she was fine. And yeah, I mean, I didn't even get to hold her. Like I held her just a little bit and it completely knocked out after that. And then I remember when I woke up, my mom was just holding her. And we were in there for three days. Um, she was due November 28th and she was born November 25th so three days before and yeah I mean we we got to I got to go home and uh, obviously we went to, to my mom's house and it was so hard like I, I got the baby blues so bad um you know like I was waking up every two hours exactly every two hours and um it was hard you know like I would cry I didn't I didn't eat I was so tired and finally my mom slept with me one of those nights and she kind of helped me out but then after that i moved into blake's place to blake's dad's house and then it was it got a little bit easier except apple had acid reflux so um it was so hard trying to switch her to formulas breast milk wasn't working for her it was so hard she literally hey. went through every formula like every single one on the informal brand and every single one on the similar um I remember it was January 1st at night and Blake was burping her. Blake was burping her. Go put it back, please. Go keep an eye on them, please. Blake was burping Apple and um, all of a sudden she, I guess her head fell and he was like, what's wrong? I don't think she's breathing. And so, you know, we're all freaked out. I blew into her face and like she kind of like got startled. But it's funny because, you know, when, when they're like a month and a half old, they can't hold their head up. So... He took her off his shoulder and she, like her head just went, like it kind of like fell, like she didn't, I don't know, it was weird and she was sleeping. We're not sure now if she was just in a deep sleep because we couldn't put her to sleep that day or if she really, you know, stopped breathing, I don't know, but I blew in her face and she kind of woke up. And so Blake was like, you know what, this happened to, this happened um, to some girl at school and the doctor told her that if she would have waited her son could have died and so he scared me so we went to the emergency room and so we went to the emergency room and of course she's not two months yet so um they did all these tests on her I remember I was crying in the emergency room because I just wanted her to be okay I wanted to go back so I had to charge my, my battery for a little bit so she was in the hospital for I want to say four days and she had IVs going. They couldn't get one through her, like her, like you know, regular wrist. They had one going through her arm one day. They had one going through her foot, and then finally another day that they had to do another one. They had one going through her head. So um, I remember my mom was so mad because the nurse kept poking, and you know, me and Blake were just there in the room with her, waiting for results. I guess they couldn't let her leave unless they for sure knew it wasn't meningitis. And the reason why she had to get two um, spinal taps is because the first time, I guess it's just like the liquid from her her spinal or her spine. Um, and the the nurse, it was a guy nurse, got um, blood in it, and I guess it's supposed to be just the liquid from in there. So they had to do it twice, and I guess you know there's a bunch of risks with it, and so we were all scared. But um, you know, after four days, they I, they also did like um, um, an ultrasound on her heart, um, just to make sure everything was okay, everything was okay with that. And then you know, finally we get to go home, and they, all they gave gave her was medication for her acid reflux. It's, it's all they.